Hey everyone, my name is Lance, and this is Amped About Aimpad. It's been about a month since my last video, so I figured now would be a good time to uh, give you an update on where things are headed and what things are looking like. Uh, lately, I've been getting some feedback from beta testers and from other people that have kind of been observing the process in, in, in our development processes, and uh, over and over again, the, the, the message that I keep getting is, it's got to be simple. Everything's got to be simple. If it's not simple, and it's confusing, or hard to configure, or make it... Uh, too difficult to use, people just aren't going to use it. They get frustrated or fed up with it. So I've been spending a lot of time focusing on just making things simple, making it as easy as possible to use um, so you don't have to mess around with anything. Um, so what I'd like to do is just kind of highlight a few of the things that I've been working on to make it easy. Uh, not only just to make it easy just to use, but to, to make it easy to configure as well. Um, so the first thing I'd like to kind of show you is uh, the, the installation process. So Essentially what I'm going to do here is I'm going to press a reset button on the keyboard to kind of disconnect it from the computer so you can see it uh, basically what the installation process is. So uh, on here I have my device manager that's listing the, the devices and so right now I'd like you to pay attention to the keyboards, the mice, and the uh, Xbox 360 controller. So right now there's five that are listed for mice, three for a keyboard, and one for the Xbox controller. So if I press the reset button, that's going to disconnect it from the computer, so it's like me unplugging the USB cable. So you can see right now that there's only two keyboards, four mice, and uh, no Xbox 360 controller. So if I let this reset button go, you'll see that it's installing the, the process for the keyboard and for the mice and the Xbox 360 controller. So uh, really, honestly, the installation process is simply that easy. I can plug it into another USB port and the process is going to be the exact the same thing. You don't have to do anything. You just plug it in, it installs a default driver for a keyboard, a default driver for a mouse, and a default driver for the Xbox 360 controller. So the installation process is very, very simple. Nothing else you have to do. Um, the other thing I'd like to do is kind of show what it's like to update the firmware. So my uh, beta testers have a process that's fairly complicated right now that, that makes it lots of kind of hoops that they have to do. They have to install a, a Windows program on their computer. They have to open up a, a on-screen keyboard because you have to type in some data in, in order to manipulate it if you don't have a, an extra keyboard to update the current or update the, the firmware on the aimpad keyboard. Um, so it's a pretty cumbersome and confusing process and uh, it's not foolproof. I had some issues with it not being plugged into a USB a USB port, USB 2 port, and uh, it's just been really kind of uh, confusing for a lot of people and it's, it's not a good experience. So uh, I decided to completely throw away that bootloader process and switch over to something completely simplified. Um, so I'd like to show what that looks like. So basically on the keyboard, there's a button that you hold down that, that enters it into a bootloader mode. So I'll do that right now. And uh, essentially all the, that happens is you'll notice here there's a disk drive that gets added onto the keyboard. The Xbox controller and the other stuff has disappeared because while it's in this mode, it's disconnected from its normal operation. It's saying, hey, give me some more firmware so I can update myself. Um, so it loads a new disk drive just as if you were to plug in like a thumb drive or something like that into the computer and uh, essentially opens up the this drive, it's a virtual drive that you can put the new firmware into. So this is my new firmware that I'm going to upload to the, the keyboard. The first thing you have to do is just to right click and delete the, the old firmware that's on there and then you go to the, the bin file that is the new firmware that I've already pre-compiled and you just dump it in there and it's going to copy it from wherever whatever location you have on your computer to the, the keyboard it's on the keyboard now all i have to do is push a reset button and the keyboard is now running the latest code so that's the the upgrade process for new firmware very simple very easy it works on any operating system it doesn't matter it shows up as if you're just plugging in a usb drive and it can update itself automatically just by simply deleting dragging and dropping uh, into the, the keyboard and it updates itself. So uh, that's a pretty nice, simple, easy way to do it. Um, so the other things I'd like to show you that we've worked on simplification, I'm gonna have to move the camera in order to kind of help demonstrate that. So I'll do that now. All right, so here we have a close up of the keyboard. Um, now this keyboard is designed to be as simple as possible from the first setup that you put it in. So um, Basically, it boots into this mode that is designed primarily to give you analog movement, but also allow you to type uh, on the keyboard at the same time. So you don't have to configure anything to get it to do 
anything that you would expect. If you were planning on using it as a uh, normal keyboard, it will work just fine as a normal keyboard. Um, and if you want to have analog movement, you don't have to do anything or push any buttons or anything at all. Uh, WASD is going to give you the left analog stick of an Xbox 360 controller. Um, and we've done a lot of testing to make sure that that works in a large variety of games. Um, even games that have no analog movement at all, just to make sure that the Xbox controller doesn't interfere at all. Um, but basically, th this is the, the simplest way that the keyboard can be configured, is just the way that it starts up in its, this default mode. Um, the other effort that we've done to, to make things simple is uh, to try to isolate the, the functions that are pr most primarily going to be used for analog functions in this cluster of keys. So. In previous versions, you might be pushing some of these other buttons, or the plus sign, or the minus sign, or whatever. Um, we've kind of thrown that all away and consolidated it all into this section here. So, basically, no matter what mode you're in, uh, you might have the keyboard as an Xbox controller, you might have it functioning as a mouse, or uh, you might have it functioning for multiple activations or things like that. But it doesn't matter what mode you're in, primarily using page up and page down, you hold down this FN key, and then push F or page up or page down, that will either increase the value of whatever mode you're in or decrease the value whichever mode you're in by pushing FN and page up and page down. So for example, in this mode where you're configuring or, or using it for a first person shooter and the game's not responding quite the way you expect uh, as you're pushing the key down, if it's not responding at right, right at the very top of the key press, uh, page up and page down configures that sensitivity. Um, if you're controlling a mouse, it would increase the speed or decrease the speed. If you are setting the activation point of where you want the keystroke to happen, you use page up and page down to set the activation point up or down, uh, depending on where you want it. So universally, page up and page down sets the primary function that you're currently in. Then uh, insert and delete is any secondary options. So for example, in this mode, if you want it to adjust the triggers, since the triggers use uh, slightly different values, that's a secondary feature, so uh, uh, using FN and insert and delete would allow you to modify the secondary feature. Um, and the s same thing, for example, with setting a secondary activation point. You could have it so that if you have two activations points and you want to have, you want to configure using page up and page down for the top key press, but the bottom key press would be manipulated by the insert and delete. Again, these are just ways to let you configure it but by default every setting has been or every profile has been pre-designed for specific intents and specific purposes so you don't have to manipulate anything if you don't want to but if things don't work the way exactly the way you want or you want just a little bit of adjustments that's what this, this cluster is primarily designed for uh, the last two things that i want to mention is on the home key if you do fn and home that disables the uh, key press at the very bottom of, of the key press and I'll kind of give a demonstration of where that's important and then the end key is to switch between a different type of uh, dead zone that the game might be using. Uh, typically you won't have to mess with these very much uh, but it's anything related to analog keys and adjusting with analog features is all in this cluster logically with primary, secondary, and uh, that's pretty much it. So 90% of the time uh, you might be manip manipulating this page up and page down, but otherwise everything else, you pretty much will just leave it alone. So, um, in order to kind of effectively demonstrate how you would manipulate this, I'd like to, to uh, give a, a demonstration in the game Saints Row the Third, and uh, give you an idea of what the process might be like just using the keyboard straight out of the box if you plug it in what's the game experience like using it in that particular game and then if you wanted to make tweaks or adjustments to fine-tune the, the, the game settings or the keyboard settings for that game uh, you can do that so let's uh, jump into that right now all right so here we have Saints Row the third um, there's a couple of things I wanted to point out first in the bottom left corner you'll see my fingers here are situated over the WASD keys that's going to be activating the, uh, the analog controls in the middle kind of right section there is a little layout of of a keyboard so that's uh, basically when I push the keys on the keyboard you'll see it activate there in the very far right corner is a representation of the Xbox controller that's exactly what's going to be demonstrating the analog effectiveness of the controls you can directly see what the game is seeing uh, when I push these keys down um, so to give you an idea uh, in this particular game 
the first thing I want to do is kind of show you the basic layout. So uh, the default layout, if I press FN escape, you'll see these lights will blink like kind of like a siren on a police car because it's an emergency. And I call this the oh crap mode. It's like why well, I configured the, the, the keyboard in such a way that I have no idea what the freak's going on. And I just want to reset it to my default setting. So you push that FN escape. And now this is the, the default experience. No, um, so uh, essentially, this is the way the keyboard was designed to apply to as many possible games as possible. Um, so the first thing you'll notice is if I push in this D key just a small amount, um, she'll start walking really slow here because I'm pushing in the key just a small amount. And on the right bottom right corner, you'll see the Xbox controller stick has been pushed in just a small amount. And if I push it in more, you'll see it move more and more and faster and faster. And eventually, I'll get to the very bottom of the key press, and you'll see that the D key on the keyboard is lit up. So what's happening here is that part of the stroke of the keyboard has been assigned to the Xbox 360 controller to allow you to uh, have analog movement. And in this game, there's phenomenal analog movement. You can move in any direction that you want and at any speed that you want, um, simply by how far you're pushing down the keys. Uh, the added advantage of having the keystroke at the very bottom is it allows you to type to your friends or type messages or uh, it also applies to any other games that may not have uh, analog control you can still use it as a normal keyboard you'll still push the key down all the way and it'll be a W and D so you'll be moving at those 45 degree angles and uh, be running at full speed um, but basically the whole point of this being the default layout is it should apply to the vast majority of games. Um, whether or not it has any type of analog support or not, it doesn't really matter. However, in this particular game, you run into a couple of problems, in particular with vehicles. So I can jump into this vehicle. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Thank you. And you're in my way. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> so I can still drive the car completely fine. Uh, with the, d the W key being all the way down, but you'll notice that the thumbstick is actually still moving forward. So that's kind of a small problem because I'm not actually having any analog speed control at this point. So if I push it in just a small amount, it's not going to respond at all on the W key until I actually get all the way down to the W press. I'm going to turn off the music here for a second. Um, so if I push it down then it activates the W key, I still have the ability to move my vehicle forward and I still have pretty good analog control kind of left here and kind of right here, not really the greatest um, in this particular game, and I'll explain why in just a second. But I wanted to, to drive home the point that I can get in and out of this car <laughs> uh, without injuring myself too bad um, and get back in the car without changing any modes or doing anything crazy. I still have the exact same control that, that I wanted to. So if you look at the steering or, or the, the car here, when I push the A key in just a small amount, again, it's not responding until I get maybe halfway pressed down. So I actually have a significant dead space in this key press, and it's not a very good user experience. And the reason why is because the game developers, for whatever reason, decided to use a different dead zone setting while in cars versus while on foot. So again, while I'm on foot and in this mode, I can move super slow just barely tapping that key down and get really, really effective control here. Um, but if I jump in the car, it doesn't have the same feeling. It doesn't respond the same way I would expect it to. And I also have the issue of I have to slam down the key. But again, for simplicity's sake, if no one wanted to mess around with any of their keyboard settings or anything like that, um, they don't have to. They can play the game just like this and still effectively get a good amount of control. But that's not good enough for me. So I I wanted to make it possible for people to set up the, the game or set up the, the keyboard to respond to the, any game in any possible way. But that does require you to learn a few things. Um, and it does require you to configure a few things. So I would never play the game completely in just this F1 mode. Um, in my opinion, the F1 mode is specifically purpose for first person shooters and third person shooters and things like that, that you want nice analog movement for. Um, but 
if you ever get into a vehicle, you need to switch it to a different mode. So there's a feature on this keyboard that is with this aimpad key. If I push it, it switches between two modes. So you can choose whichever those two modes you want. So I want the first mode to be that normal one while I'm on foot, and I push this other one to switch it to some other mode. So right now it's in a, a normal keyboard mode. It's just going to be responding as a, a just a normal digital keyboard. But that's not what I want. I want it to be in the driving mode. So if I push FN and F2, it turns to this green mode, and what this does is it changes the controls so that when I push down the W key just a small amount, what will happen is that right trigger will kind of get darker and darker the more I push it down. So on the Xbox controller, if I push it down, it turns all the way black. So now I have pushed down the accelerator all the way. At the same time, I also have uh, the left and, or the left stick is controlled by the A and D key, so I still have the analog controls. The problem here is that I want it to get around, though, is that if I push in that A key a small amount, it's not responding right now. So I have to push it down about there, where you can see her hand kind of moving right now, and the, the steering uh, column is, is being adjusted. I want it to respond like that, but at the very top of the press, because it's a difficult concept or difficult difficult type to control because I'll be driving along here pretty well with the analog speed but when I want to make a nice small adjustment so like say I'm just driving along here and I want to slightly pass in between these cars I have to push 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 and now it's responding into the area and it's like a disconnect if I'm trying to make that fast of an adjustment really really like small adjustments but really quickly it really sucks because you have to kind of push down both of the keys at the same time and kind of let one win over the other and it's just not as good of a user experience like it it's not the way I would want to play this game so what I would have to do is you have to increase the sensitivity and the sens sensitivity can be configured per mode so right now uh, the F1 mode was working perfectly while I was on foot but on in the car I want it to respond a little bit better so you do that by pushing the FN and then page up key to aim. Oh, that jerk. Uh, let me get out the road for a second. And so I'll increase the sensitivity a little bit. And let's see how it responds now. Mm, not quite yet. Let me do it a little bit more. Probably one more. Okay, so now when I push in the key just a small amount. Let me go one more. There we go. Okay, so I'm just barely touching the key and you can see her, her uh, hand moving the steering wheel there and the wheel on the bottom will also be moving in a direct relation to my my uh, actions with there with, with the key now the other problem that we have that I want to fix in this game is so right now the A and the D key if I push down the A key all the way you'll see that the A letter lights up so what's happening is I'm actually reaching the full range of the analog signal but it's kind of throwing away some of the throw of the switch so I have I can't use the entire throw because at the very bottom it's using this uh, this, this letter or the, the keystroke for the key is being sent to the game. So I can disable that by pushing FN and home and that allows me to not have the keyboard activated on WASD anymore. It's purely just seeing it as an Xbox 360 controller. So now as I push in that A key I actually have the full range so it actually ends right at 100% of me pushing down the key all the way. So this provides the greatest amount of uh, control over the car because I can make very small, uh, subtle adjustments right at the very top of the press. So I, I know that as soon as I uh, like have the intent to move slightly to the right, I can aim my car in between traffic without any issues here. And still uh, make you know bigger turns here. It's going to be a little unfortunate that it's raining at this point, but uh, I'll uh, kind of show you how easy it is to steer this way now that the car responds immediately rather than having that significant dead zone. So let me, uh, I don't know, take a turn up here real quick and see how I do. So hopefully that gives you a good idea of what's involved. But so now, now what, what gameplay looks like between this. So I have two modes. One mode is for while I'm in the car and one mode is while I am on foot. So since I'm in the car, I'll be driving along and let's say something bad happens and I get crashed uh, and I have to get out of the car. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to push E to get out of the car. 
Now the problem is, I, I still am going to be able to move left and right just fine, but if I push W, the trigger is going to be pulling, so it's just going to start punching. That's because I'm in the driving mode. That's designed for the driving mode. So I need to remember to have to push this aimpad key that lets me switch really quickly to another mode. Um, and now I have full movement because this is designed for the first-person shooter mode, so I have the ability to line up my shots left and right really easily, still have full aiming with the mouse, but anytime I get in and out of a car, I have to remember this animation is occurring, so I push this uh, caps lock key to get in the car, and now it's in the driving mode, and if I get out, the animation is there, and I push the key to be back on foot. So that is the biggest reason why we have the caps lock key configured for this uh, this game and other games in general is that if you want to switch really quickly it needs to be somewhere relatively related to where your fingers are going to be otherwise it's going to be a big hassle to switch to some other mode if you're getting in and out of cars like this so that's the, the, the design principle the whole reason for this caps lock key being sacrificed for the purpose of quick switching um, Another feature I haven't really shown before is it is possible that people don't want to use the caps lock key. I can make the caps lock key be the or the quick switch be key be assigned to the scroll lock key. Um, but uh, <laughs> again, if I had to push the scroll lock key every time I got in and out of a car, that would be pretty sucky. Um, but for whatever reason, if you love the, the caps lock key and you can't do without it, then uh, it is possible to switch it to the scroll lock key by pushing FN and the tilde key. And that, now the caps lock key is not going to switch. It's just going to switch the caps lock function. And I can switch it back so that I can switch back between my two modes. So uh, hopefully that gives you a good idea of what is possible with configuring the game. Keeping it simple if you want it, but if you want the full control that's possible, you can configure it to be as deep as you want it to be. All right, so there you go. Hopefully you enjoyed that uh, little bit of insight into our developmental process to try and simplify things and make it easy. Hopefully that came across pretty well. If things still look pretty confusing or still difficult to uh, configure, please let me know. I do value your feedback very, very much. If you like this video and want to see more, go ahead and subscribe. We'd love to have you. Otherwise, until next time, thanks for watching.